What's up guys, Dylan from Digital Adventures here, and today we're going to be learning a little bit about how to make a replica of the original Asteroids game, which is a game that came out a long time ago in the 70s. Uh, it was an arcade game, and if you want to kind of see what the original game looked like, I recommend looking it up on YouTube. Just search Asteroids Arcade Game, and you can see some footage. Uh, but let me start off by showing you what the project we're making today is eventually going to look like. So here's my game. I am controlling the rocket ship. We're in outer space and we have to dodge the asteroids, right? So I can fly around and I got to dodge these asteroids. And eventually we're going to have the ability to shoot lasers to destroy the asteroids. But for now, we're going to be focusing today on cloning these asteroids and also getting them to loop around the screen. Notice how when the asteroids go off screen, they reappear on the opposite side. So let's keep an eye on this guy right here, for example. He goes off screen and he just reappeared on the bottom. So let's go ahead and program this looping feature. Getting sprites to loop around the screen is a very common thing in 2D games. So this is a very useful thing to know. So I have my basic game set up here so far. I have the controls for my rocket ship. You can check them out here. The up arrow moves us 10 steps. The right arrow turns us 15 degrees and the left arrow turns us the opposite direction in 50 degrees. The asteroid just has some basic code here for uh, setting the size to 40%. And I'll show you why we hide it in just a sec. Uh, and I also have a backdrop, which is basically just a big black rectangle because we're in space. Okay, so let's start coding our asteroid. Now, what do we want to happen with this asteroid? Well, we want it to, we want to create seven of these asteroids, about seven I like to use. We want them to spawn in a random location. And we also want them to spawn with a random direction so that they all fly off in different directions. So first things first, let's, clone this asteroid seven times at the beginning so that we get seven asteroids. So right off the bat, we're going to be using the create clone of myself block right here. And we want seven clones. So we're actually going to wrap this create clone block in a repeat loop. So I'm going to grab repeat 10 and wrap it around, but I'm going to change it to repeat seven. Okay. Now we're going to be, we're not going to worry about the original asteroids. We're mostly going to be programming the clones. That's why we use the hide block here. Uh, so that the, so that scratch kind of hides the original. We only want to code the clones. So we're going to grab a when I start as a clone block like this. And the first thing we're going to do actually is show the clone, right? So let's put a show block here. And then if you click the green flag and grab these asteroids, we have a bunch. So they are cloning. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And there we go. Okay. Now we also want each of these asteroids to go to a random position on the, on the screen. Scratch makes that really easy. There's actually a block that does this exact thing. Uh, we can just say, Go to random position. 
we might want to do that before we show them. Okay. Now, right off the bat, you can test that. And every time you click the green flag, you'll get seven clones, but they'll all go to a different location. Hopefully, hopefully not right on top of your spaceship. Right. Okay, great. So now we want each of these asteroids to go in a different direction. Right now they spawn in a different position, a random position, but we want each of them to kind of fly off in random directions, right? So this is a bit more difficult in Scratch. Uh, we're gonna use the point in direction block maybe put it right here before we show the sprite. And if you test this, you know, they're all gonna be pointing in direction 90, which is to the right. Um, so we wanna randomize this number. So we're gonna use the very useful pick random block. And we're gonna pick between zero and 360, right? 360 degrees is a full circle. So we want to choose a random direction from zero to 360 degrees. Now, if you test that, you'll kind of see that they're all kind of pointed in different directions now. See? Okay, so that's good. And now we need to get them to move. This is actually really easy. We're just going to take a move block. And since we want them to constantly move as we play the game, whenever you want something to constantly happen, you generally want to use the forever loop. So we're going to say forever, move 10 steps. 10 steps is going to be a little fast. So I would recommend move three steps. And then we can test it out. And there they go. So you can see that now the clones are picking a random position to spawn. They're picking a random direction, and then they're constantly moving in that direction. However, now we get this classic problem where they reach the edge of the screen and then they're stuck there, right? So we want if a sprite goes off screen right, for example, if it goes off the right edge, we want it to reappear on the opposite side of the screen, so on the left side. So if it goes off screen here, then we want it to reappear here and keep its direction and keep its movement. OK, so let's program that. but. Before we do that, actually, uh, take your movement code for the asteroids and let's actually put it in a separate chunk of code. When you're programming in Scratch, it's important to split your code up into different chunks that each do a very specific thing. So I'm going to have a separate when I start as a clone block, and this blocks or this chunk of code's job is just movement, forward movement. So I'm going to put that over here. And all the code for looping the sprite around the screen is going to go here. OK. Now, we want the game to constantly loop the sprites around the screen if they go off the edge. So we're going to be using a forever loop. Now the question is, how do we basically tell Scratch, OK, if the sprite goes off screen right, send it to the left side of the screen? How do we tell Scratch to do that? Well, remember, Scratch tracks the position of things according to the x coordinate and the y coordinate. If, you, if I take my rocket ship, actually, and I steer him up towards the top. Or actually, let's go to the right edge. Let's go over to the right. His x coordinate right now is 255. He's actually a bit beyond the, the right edge. So 
In Scratch, the right edge of the screen is actually X coordinate 240. So 240 is the coordinate or the X coordinate of the right edge of the screen. Okay, so let's go, let's go over to the left edge. Let's check that out. So now my now its X position is negative 255. So the left edge of the screen in Scratch is actually X coordinate negative 240. So what we can do here is instead of literally saying, if the sprite goes off screen left, then send it to the right side. Instead of saying that, we're gonna say, if the asteroid's X position goes beyond 240, then send it to the other side of the screen, which is minus 240, right? Okay, so check this out. We're gonna use an if statement for sure. And let's start with the right side. So we need to say if the asteroid's X position is, has gone beyond 240, then send it to negative 240. So for that, we'll need a greater than block from the operators. And we're going to grab the X position. So if X position is greater than 240, which is the right edge of the screen, then we're going to set the X to minus 240. Okay, so we can actually test this out. Look at this guy right here. Oh, that didn't quite work, let's see. Okay, look at this guy here. There, do you see that? So he just went across the screen. Let's try one more time. I'm not getting very lucky here. There, boom, he just looped across the screen. Oh, he's gonna do it again, watch, boom. Now, they're not looping when they go to the bottom edge or any of the other edges actually. So let's fix that. We need four, three more if statements. This time we need to say, if he's gone beyond the left edge, then go to the right side. So let's just duplicate this code and I mean, this time we need to say, if it's less than negative 240, send, send him to positive 240. So it's basically the opposite. So let's get a less than block. So if X position is less than minus 240, send his, set his X position to positive 240. And if we test this, you will see the asteroids loop when they go off screen left. Here, watch this guy. And boom, there he goes. So he is looping. All right, well now let's do the top and bottom. The top and bottom is a bit different than the X because, well, in Scratch, the top coordinate, the top Y coordinate of the top edge of the screen is 180. And the bottom edge is negative 180. So we're going to use similar logic, but slightly different numbers. So you can actually duplicate both these uh, if blocks and put them below here. But we need to change a couple things. First off, get rid of the X position blocks and replace them with Y position. Okay. And instead of 240 and negative 240, we're actually going to use 180 and negative 180. So let's change that. That. 
We also don't want to set X to minus 240. We actually want to set Y to uh, negative 180. So go ahead and grab a set Y to block. You can actually grab two of them. And when he goes, when he goes past the top, past 180, we want to send him to the bottom. So we're going to send him to minus 180. And if he goes past the bottom, then we're going to send him to the top. So we're going to send him to 180. Get rid of this. And if you test this out, you will have looping asteroids. So your asteroids can now fully loop across the screen. So that's going to be it for today, guys. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this. Stay tuned for part two, where I'm going to be showing you how to program the laser and shooting down asteroids. And uh, that's going to be it for today. So have a great week, and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching, guys. And if you want to check out the code and the sprites that I used for this walkthrough, uh, you can check out my Scratch project in the description below. I posted a link to the project. So go ahead and check that out. Also, be sure to subscribe to the Digital Adventures channel. We've got tons of content, tons of videos showing you how to build with code. So take care, and uh, I'll see you next time.